Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast as always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. So, today on the video guys, why is it that the front of the engine is never painted? And when we're talking about uh, paint jobs, how come that most aircraft are painted in this boring white color when you can do so much cooler things? Stay tuned. Wind 310 at 16, This video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, if you're like me, you kind of wished that you didn't spend the summer chilling by the pool, that you would have actually used your brain a little bit. Now, Brilliant.org is a fantastic tool for doing exactly that. To keep your brain working and to do so in a fun and interactive way. The five on the first of you, who uses this link here below will get a whopping 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant, but as always, it's completely free to check it out, so do that. Right guys, this video is based on a question that came in from one of you guys during one of my Sunday night live streams. And the question was, how come that no matter what airline I fly with, the front of the engine, that's in the engine inlet, is always, always that kind of metallic color? How come it's never painted? And also, how come that most of the aircraft I see out there are painted predominantly white. What's the reason for that? You know, why wouldn't we see more of these cool kind of Star Wars themed aircraft out there? Now that's a great question and I wanted to, to dedicate this episode to that. So if we start with the engine part, um, if you think about it, it is very, very important um, that the, the front of the engine Retrain, retains its original form, that it's not changed in any way. Because the, the way that the engine kind of sucks in air is extremely important to make sure that you get the best possible performance out of the, uh, the jet engine. But it is also straight there in the airstream. So this means that it's very susceptible to ice buildups. You know, ice will start to build up on the engine inlets, on the leading edges of the wings, the stabilizer, the fin, and to a certain um, amount also the nose. But if it starts building up on the, uh, on the engine inlet, it can become quite risky quite quickly because A, it changes the way that the air will come into the engine, and B, if it would form and then start breaking loose, you would have huge chunks of ice being sucked into the engine, which is not great. Now this means that we need to have some kind of way to avoid that and the way that we do this on the 737 is that we actually take some bleed air out of the either fifth or the ninth stage of the engine compressor and we divert that out of the engine and then back in to the front of the engine cowling onto the engine lip. That way we're now heating up the leading edge part of the engine and we're avoiding ice for even being built up. So the way that we do this in the aircraft is that anytime we see that the total air temperature drops below 10 degrees Celsius and we are flying in visible moisture, so that's inside of clouds, fog, rain, snow, any kind of precipitation, well then we switch the engine and the ice on. So we do it well before we have any kind of ice buildup. Now, by taking a little bit of, um, of uh, bleed air from the engine, we're actually taking some of the effect of the engine away. So it has a performance um, penalty by doing so. It will burn more fuel if we're using the engine and the ice for a long time. But we have to do it for safety reasons. But you also know, if you've been following your physics, and this is one of the reasons why you should check out Brilliant here below, uh, you know that metal is a good conveyor of heat. Okay, and anytime that you put something on top of that metal layer, it means that the heat that we're now taking from the engine is not being transmitted as effectively as it could if there was nothing there, right? So the fact that it is made out of metal makes the engine and the ice more effective, and that's probably the single biggest reason why it looks like that. But if, even if that wasn't the case, if you think about it, if we would start to paint the leading edges of the engine intakes, inevitably at some point that paint would start to degrade and you would have 
little chunks of it being kind of torn off. The risk is then that if you have paint, little chips of paint coming into the engine, it might be sucked into the engine core and it might melt in there and it can cause quite significant damage, especially if it's a lot of it over a long period of time. So that's another reason. And as that happens, if the paint would start to degrade, what you would have is slight differences in the surface of the intake, which would change the aerodynamic and change the, the amount of air that's being sucked in. It could cause little, tiny little vortexes. And all of that has performance implications on the engine. So if you take all of those three reasons together, you see why it's a bad idea to paint that engine, and, uh, engine inlet. Okay. Now, if we then move on to the rest of the aircraft and how the rest of the aircraft is painted, uh, you would see that if you look over the worldwide fleet, uh, most of the aircraft are predominantly white. And there are really good reason for that. So um, I'm going to give you three or potentially four good reasons. We start with number one. It is the actual cost of the painting in the first place and the weight of the, uh, the paint. So the cost to paint an aircraft differs between about $50,000 to around $200,000, depending on how uh, complicated it is. Normally, uh, an aircraft, when it comes out of factory, it is um, kind of painted with this greenish color. That's a protective layer that's there just to protect the, uh, the metal. And then it's being moved from where it was made into a painting hall. And there it will receive at least two layers of paint up to three layers if you want something more fancy. It takes between seven and 10 days to do that paint job. Um, and like I said, it can cost quite a lot of money to do so. Now, the first layer is just a protective layer. The second is kind of a varnish. Uh, and the third layer tends to be the more, um, you know, that's where you add on your fancy paint scheme. If you want it to look like it's coming from Star Wars, that's gonna be the third layer. And that's also the most expensive part of it. So the less paint you add on on your third layer, the cheaper it's going to be and the less it's going to weigh. Okay, so that's reason number one. Uh, reason number two is probably resellability. So um, an aircraft during its life is probably going to move not within just one airline, but between maybe two or three different airlines. So um, if an airline number one has made a very intricate paint scheme, it's going to be harder to sell it to customer number two because customer number two is going to have to pay more money to repaint that aircraft. Now, if it is predominantly white, it's going to be much easier to do that transition. And you might sound, it might sound that that's a little bit petty, but every dollar counts in this industry. Okay, so resell value is also really important. But the single biggest reason is reason number three. And that has to do with the temperature. Now, I'm sure all of you out there has been outside on a summer day, either wearing a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt at some point. I'm sure that you've noticed that the black t-shirt will make you start sweating and make you hot very, very quickly, while the white t-shirt is going to keep you fresh for longer. The same thing goes for an aircraft. So when the aircraft is sitting on the apron on a nice summer day and it's sunny outside, if you have a white aircraft, you're gonna require less air conditioning and it's gonna keep cool longer. While if you have a black aircraft or a dark aircraft, it's going to almost immediately become unbearably hot inside. That's one reason. Second reason is that you know, you don't want to subject the surface material of the aircraft to too big temperature changes. Remember that an aircraft, even, you know, no matter what the color is, is going to have to work within a temperature range of between maybe minus 70 degrees centigrade to maybe plus 45 degrees centigrade on the surface. Um, if you add on that it, on top of that has a very dark paint scheme, it means that it's now absorbing more uh, sunlight and maybe the surface temperature is not gonna be plus 45, maybe it's gonna be plus 85 on a dark aircraft. So that increases the temperature range that the surface material have to withstand. And with that comes the possibility of potential micro cracks and stuff like that in the material. So that is done from a safety point of view as well. Now, on top of that, if you take reason number four, um, people, 
are saying that a white aircraft is more easy to see by birds, so it might avoid bird strikes. And also, uh, from a search and rescue perspective, it's easier to find from the air um, pieces of aircraft that are light col colored, like white, for example, than it is to find something that is dark colored. So there are other reasons for it as well. But altogether, you have a good and sound reason for keeping the aircraft painted predominantly white. That's it, guys. I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this episode, which is Brilliant.org. Now, if you're like me, you like doing little kind of mind crackers and keep yourself up to date. So if you go into Brilliant.org and you check out the course Logic, you'll find loads of these little kind of problems to solve. You'll also get a daily problem sent out to you or a daily challenge sent out to you every single day. So you can take those crucial 10-15 minutes to kind of exercise your brain just like you would exercise your body. Five of the first of you who uses this link here below will get a whopping 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant. But like I said in the beginning, it is completely free to check it out. So do that. Have an absolutely fantastic day, guys. As always, I want to see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app. We have a fantastic community in there now. Around 20,000 people every month comes in there and change, you know, talks about aviation, talks about how they are afraid of flying or how they're going for a flight school or, like me, how it is to work inside of the industry. Completely free to sign up for the, uh, for the app, guys. So go down, use the links here below, and I'll see you inside of the app. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.